every one of you watching this screen. Look out. Anything can happen in the next half hour. What did I tell you about cartoons? They've got a lot of brains, and they've got a lot of cushions. Tell me how comic books make you feel, Dave. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Hi, this is Franz Cantor, cartoonist, illustrator, and tune talker, and I'm here with... Jim Bridges. And I'm the president of the Australian Cartoon Museum. And uh, today we're doing the sweeter side of Robert Crumb. The sweeter side? Yes, so do you think... This it... is a crummy book. Do you <laughs> think there is such a thing as the sweeter side of this guy? MQP. Who's MQP? Does amazing things to my system. MQ Publications uh, Limited. Yeah. So this is the um, book. You well, know, I mean, this guy, buy. this guy is... He is a master. He's amazing he uh, is, comic artist, but underground the sweetest comic artist. Oh, look at those end papers. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, the living end. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So this is the nice stuff. This is the this, nice stuff. This is the stuff <clears throat> that so, your mum can look at. Oh, look at that. Look at that. The sweetest Yeah. Side. Oh, look at that. This is lovely. Look at that. Wow. So, uh, Robert Crumb does uh, obviously underground. Being a delightful collection comics. of adorable, heartwarming, and lovingly rendered drawings, which I promise will not make you feel threatened in any way, and I will put you in a state of all warm and fuzzy, cuddly towards the artist and the life in general. Oh, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice from a guy that everybody has a problem with? One By Mr. Other. Nicey Nice. Yes. South of oh, France, 2006. Oh, 2006, yeah. Well. Wow. So these are drawings. Uh, of course, he had this um, incredibly beautiful crosshatch uh, technique oh, of rendering that's form. That's where Fritz came from, huh? <laughs> and, um, that's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, so he had this, it's a really strong technique. Yes. I mean, when you look at it, he has a strong technique that's, that's really... Um, that's his first his wife own. and his son. Mm. 1969. Yeah. So these are some of the drawings gleaned from his sketchbooks. A few obsessions Over here. The years. Big legs and boots. Yeah. He can't help himself. You can start to see. Is this chronological? I think it might be. Uh, I don't know. Almost. I don't know. Well, this is a. I don't know. He put that so brushwork, isn't it? Mm. I've never seen him do brushwork. Well, I have, but well, he would have been experimenting. Yeah. It's just yeah. from his sketchbook. Yeah. So these well, are unpublished, really. Yeah, he, here he is, he walks with his daughter, mm. and, you know, he's trying to explain how horses do poo, and mm. that, and she says, well, why don't we do it in the road? We have to use toilets. And then she looks at the tree and says... How do trees poop? Yeah, that's right. And so it's just a little observational story, and here's some more about his daughter. Mm. So, she grew up to be a cartoonist herself. Yeah. So the comics are really beautiful, um, well, humble yeah. little uh, renderings, a very loose style. Yes, for him. Um, and then he gets into some of these very tightly rendered scenes of things. You know, it, the interesting thing about Crumb is that you look at stuff, even the pornography that he does, the pornographic Does he comics, do pornography? Yeah. Does he? <laughs> um, you look at it and you think, you know, um, this it's such such... Uh, lo so lovingly done. The technique is so um, incredibly slow and exacting. Yes. You know, to create form he's and got, character and and He's time got a great place. eye. Look, look at that. Look, he's got a great eye. Yeah, and you know, and this is really like if you're looking at um, a chronicler of the time, like uh, you know, uh, probably Bruegel. Bruegel. Yes, thank you. Or uh, Goya or someone. Um, you know, he's definitely a chronicler of the time as well. Oh, yeah. And I, I think any artist worth their soul have, has to um, 
has to engage with the issues of, his, of their times mm. and not just be a, a nostalgic thing, you know. Mm. But they're, they're lovingly done, you know, it does it irrespective of the subject. Sometimes in the sketchbooks he'll draw his hand, like he's left-handed, he'll draw his right hand. And, um, you know, the, the, the um, humbling way that he treats the subject is, is amazing. Like even though he's, um, you know, he has this love of of, uh, of bluegrass music and old music, old uh, instruments and things, um, and of course his women, you know, women. He loves women and um, will, uh, you know, explore them in in a very uh, humanistic way. So it's incredibly powerful in terms of a chronicle of of. Uh, of the moment. This is what photographs can't do. And even from investing, like, you know, this illustration predominantly would be from uh, an old photograph. No, that's him. Oh, that's him. That's him. Yeah. So I, I would presume that they've taken a photograph. That's his band at Cheap Suit Serenaders. Well, I mean, a lot of the stuff is taken from photos, although this wouldn't be. Yeah, and a lot of it's drawn from life. Yeah. And, I mean, he's produced a whole book of just stuff he's, he's sat waiting in restaurants mm. to get served that he draws But the everything. thing that strikes me is that, you know, I mean, look irrespective that. of look the subject, so, like, we often think, you know, oh, it's just a tree, I don't want to draw that. But then he'll draw it, you know, and sort of draw attention to it. So you experience this, this tree in, in a whole new way. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Which is the, the beauty of, uh, of Crumb, what he does. You're seeing all these these uh, musicians from yesteryear, you know, um, Bumblebee Slim, Ernie and Amelia Kikaris. Well, by drawing them all, they all become the same era. Yeah. You know what I mean? By drawing mm. them all with his style, they all become the but same era. But they're lovingly era. done. You know, yeah. look, at, look at the reflections in this man's eyes. Yeah, he spent a bit of time, I'd say... Traditional healer. I'd say he so. looks very surprised. I think he spent a bit of time going for a National Geographic, yeah. I reckon. Oh, look at that. A curtain. You a know, curtain. I mean, these are exercises, uh, ostensibly, I That's suppose. That's a bloody good curtain. But you could see the amount of effort that's gone into creating the volumes. <laughs> in the corner, you've got a neko blast, uh, yeah. a ghetto blast. Yeah, but nothing, nothing is beneath his attention. That's a beautiful tree. That is. That's a fantasy tree. It's a tree. gothic fantasy tree. Mm. And what's you, what, reading a newspaper? No, like a book. So the thing that comes through all his uh, sketches, all his work, is of course the humanity that comes through. Look at all this. The um, personalities of the people, you know, what their stories are. It's it's almost like I, I looking at a lot of his his uh, poses, his his women, his still lifes, not still lifes. What are they called? Portraits of women. I'm I'm kind of I don't know whether you you have to tell me whether you have the same feeling, but I, I look at uh, this like. What if um, Hopper was uh, able to use a pen? You know, would he tell stories like this? Would he draw illustrations like this? I well, think he would. I think, besides being a, a, like this, besides being the greatest underground cartoonist of all time, and basically mm. that means drawing um, stuff and and stories about themes that ordinary comics don't use. Mm. The Holy Grail. This is obviously a record he's been after for a long time. And got all these girls and all this mm. sort of stuff. But these, his angels have to wear boots and have big bones. Mm, you know. mm. Broken teapot. It's a bit of Amazing. Look at this. Mm. That's a it's a lesson for all of us. Like if you're if you're looking for subjects to draw, this is what I wanted to say. You know, it's what you invest in the in the idea. Ah, good on you, mate. Oh, this Charles. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, this uh, this this is the warm and fuzzy stuff, isn't it? <laughs> as he calls it. Twelve well, types. Yeah. So it's just really ex exploring characters, exploring stories. Every character tells a story, you know, and certainly he he's a uh, proof of that happening. Well, he obviously liked her. Nineteen sixty-one. Yeah, he obviously liked her. Oh, look at. Oh. Yeah. Swings a moon hockey stick. Mm. Shoot. Okay. Well, look at that early crumb. 
well, it's not early crumb, but that's crumb what he likes. So he's 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 going down memory lane here. There's all, a lot of these portraits have these sort of autobiographical yes. um, discourses in them, like these little notes that he puts in there. He'll he'll always put like you know a diary to himself in the future, perhaps. Yeah. You know the name of the model and um, a little bit of well, information. Well, there was a girl who went to his high school who had the, yeah. the hots for. Yeah. And look. Yeah. That's Shem, obviously his favourite. His favorite um, he's just your favourite too. Yeah. Mm. Look at this. Mmm. It's just this is such an accomplished visual storyteller. It's just really amazing. I think we need to look at this. Yeah, zoom in. I mean, the way that he's layered these, uh, the cross hatching with the leaves, you know, to create this this um, depth in the forest is just amazing. And it's just done with a simple pen. So, you know, no expensive brushes or brush pens or any kind of gizmos you know computer graphics are just very humble and very very beautifully done the modeling on i mean he'll do these 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 women right and they're caricatured in a way uh that that sort of give them um a strangeness uh about their pose and about the way that they're you know um, got big legs and and things but and things okay. yeah but the um <laughs> the, the personality comes out the personality yes. comes out it's really you know gotten down and dirty down and dirty and deep into the characters well he's got down and dirty lots of times mm. oh these are great singers from the from... wow so we're kind of seeing these people through his eyes yeah, right yeah. so you appreciate again you appreciate not again you appreciate for the first time these little um, uh, um, historical um, uh, people, historical stories, stories from history, you know, and they're lovingly treated. This is his cousin Dave Crumb. Mm. There's, I mean, they're really, uh, 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 his women sort of have this sort of super, almost a superhero stance. I think he's in awe of women. Yeah. I think he's absolutely he's in very, awe of very, women. A, you know, powerful. They're not. They're not. Um, yeah. I don't think he's ever drawn a weak woman. No. So you know, really, he loves this. He loves the medium of um, the pen. His the his pen wife. So uh, 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 yeah, that's his wife. She's yeah. and these are, they, yeah, these are his seventy eights. Yeah, look at and them all there. I did a hundred legless today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's strong, isn't it? Mm. That's nude strong. exercise and God. light and shade. If um, three dimensional If you're modeling. a teacher and you're doing nude um, drawing, and yeah. one of your students did that, you'd be impressed. Very, very yeah. strong. But you see, even got things that you wouldn't think, you know, are well, important, yeah. like the edge of the rug. Yeah. Know, the, the little tiny lines in the yeah, here. In the feet. Look, look, look here because of the yeah. So he's able to do that with the pen. That's it's it's a really incredible accomplishment, I think. You know, yeah. The technique is uh, unsurpassed. It's, he's really, he really is a master of the medium. But the subject matter is incredibly powerful and very, very unusual. I can't stress this enough. This, um, this man, it doesn't matter really, well, it does matter what you buy of his, but um, <laughs> in the end, um, I think if, if you sort of look at the way that he, he his decision making, you know, for uh, light and dark, and well, most the of this, small strokes and yeah, but, long strokes. But and most of this was how done. he builds up this incredible yeah. uh, value of light and dark yeah. with with a cross hatching. It's just an incredibly powerful. It's that's, another that's superhero her, stance with his beloved seventy eights behind yeah. her. Janet Klein and her borscht belt of babies. The borscht belt, <laughs> yeah. Plunker, 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 show it up. Oh, look at this. Mm. And there's the man himself. In uh, 2005. Mm. Failure in Sudan. You, you sort of see pictures like that and you wonder what the sort of a, a political economist. cartoonist he'd be. 
You I think it'd be, yeah, it'd probably um, overkill. I think that he's too good for that. Um, ephemera. Ah, too good for that. Hang on. Yeah. You heard it here first. He's too good for the ephemera of the daily grind. I think these are... Uh, the ephemera. Yeah. These are, like, they should be actually, you know, not part of a job. They should be part of his journey, his visual journey himself. And it's a great book. I love this book. This is um, one of it, his best. This is the one you can buy for your your, 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 your girlfriend's granny. mother. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, well, here we go. Another believe one. it or not. <laughs> and he's got his cat with him as he walks. Yeah. And, of course, a girl with a big bottom and big and boots. And she's in love. She sees in, him and yeah. she's in love. He's going to draw me. Yeah. Okay. And I like the way the tree goes. This is goes. Vance Cantor. And this is Jim Bridges saying um, the old crumb is still going. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Yes. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for the sour persimmons, cousin.